Oh, hey guys. Zell here, and today we're doing drinking and thinking out in the shop because we got kind of some construction going on down in the bunker. So, you've got nine seconds as usual to get your drink of choice. I was just out here in the shop doing some looking and such at the Zeta and the Eschaton from uh, Isham Blade Works and Wee Knife, their collaboration. And we'll have more on these knives very soon. We'll do a full video on each one of them. And, uh, you know, don't tell Elisha that I was looking at them that close, please. Anyhow, let's jump into sharp news. We have Victorinox and Nespresso teaming up to make handle scales for the Pioneer. And uh, what they're doing is taking the plastic and recycling the plastic out of the Nespresso cups and making the handle scales out of them. And cool thing here is it's not going to be a European only thing. They're going to import a few of them to the United States so those collectors that want them can get a hold of them. And that would be kind of like here in the United States if uh, Victorinox, or let's say, let's keep it all in the United States, Benchmade teamed up with Keurig and their K-Cups to make handle scales. Very much the same thing. So it's kind of cool, kind of a recycling thing, and the links are below to find out more information as usual. And Hawk Knives, and I've got to read this one, guys, and Panchinko collaborate on the Orbit Hawk Lock Flipper. Quite the name, Orbit Hawk Lock Flipper. Sounds good. And it's a cool knife, and it's one that's going to come in at a reasonable price. Still expensive, but a reasonable price for a G&G Hawk Custom. And it's going to have, you're going to have to want, read the article, but it's a neat variation of the Hawk Lock that should go over real well. And I hope that the Hawks license that thing out and get it into other makers' hands, because it should be really, really cool. suppose we'll find out, won't we? And New York and Michigan have knife reform laws that only need the governor's signature. In New York, it's a gravity clause to get rid of that thing where the police can go like that and see if the knife will flip out. And we all know, we saw not long ago, that I can make just about any knife flip out like that. So New York's law is pretty, well, crappy. And then in Michigan, it's to get the switchblade clause off the books. So let's hope that the governors aren't jerky and they just sign those and get things moving along because those things need to go away all these crazy laws and that's it for uh, blog news let's get on to videos and first up we have Nick Shabazz with his knife gripe for the week and it's called short change you'll have to go over and watch it I'm not going to tell you what's in there and then Nick also again with ch knives and if you want to know about ch knives, get over there and watch it. If you want to know why I don't haven't had any ch knives on this channel, go over there and watch it. And uh, Nick does a really good job of explaining in his own style, of course, why reviewing and dealing with ch knives and others of that ilk is a gamble for the knife reviewer. And it's a pretty interesting video and a very interesting conversation. And then we have Love Them Knives' take on Todd Begg's Steelcraft Glimpse. And uh, I know you guys think that I love anything that came from Wii and that I dote over it and stuff, and not the Glimpse. The Glimpse is not a knife design that I am a huge fan of. But a lot of people seem to be fans of the Glimpse. I mean, it's up to like version 6 or 8 or something like that. So that means there's a lot of people that like it. And everyone that has touched the Wii knife uh, Glimpse seems to like it. Except me. I'm a weirdo. But uh, anyhow, go over there and get a look at what Love Them Knives has got to say about it. And Walter Sorrels again this week. This time he's showing off some of his Japanese swords. And if you haven't seen any of Walter's Japanese swords, this is a little short video, like four minutes long or something. Go over there and watch. Walter is phenomenal at making these things. And it's just, you know, it's just beautiful. Get over there and watch it. And then... Knife Crazy has put together a kind of edge retention test video on LC200N. And uh, you just need to go, go and watch it. It's a kind of a long video for what it is, but there's a reason for it being that way. And it may be enough to make you interested in the LC200N. Anyhow, get over there and watch it. 
And then Cedric and Ada Outdoors. This week, Cedric gives us a video short, and he calls it Regret, Loss, and Hope in the Knife Game. And it's only about three minutes long, and it is well worth your time. Anyhow, from here, we're going to go to a camera down. I want to talk about customization for just a minute here, guys. Uh, do you do things, are you interested in things like this knife is not really custom, but it does have a custom edge on it. Uh, is that something that interests you? We've got the Delica here. This is a Hat 40 model. It's got a nice mirror edge on it, but more importantly, we've got a custom pocket clip. Now, this isn't quite the right one for this model, but it's the one I had on hand, and it works okay. But it is a custom pocket clip. Uh, is that something that you might do? You know, I put lanyards on some of these really tiny knives because the lanyard doesn't weigh anything, doesn't take up much room in the pocket, and it makes it a heck of a lot easier to find that thing down in your left pocket or anywhere you might have it. You know, we got the hinderer here. I have biohazard emblems on the sleeves. Very simple customization, but nah, yeah, maybe kind of neat. Or do you go full custom? We got to zoom out for this guy. I like this pocket sword. Uh, this belongs to Elijah Isham. And I don't want to mess up by saying the wrong name. It was a custom made for him. But, you know, that's a pocket sword. That's definitely a custom. And I do mean pocket sword. That's a Delica. Anyhow. Are those types of things something that interests you? Yeah. Something that has interested me is lightening some of these knives. You know, we've done it with some, with some Todd Knife and Tool Knives. We have a Micro Raptor that uh, Zenny Lin has right now that has a carbon fiber show scale on it. And that show scale, with that show scale, that knife doesn't weigh anything. I mean, it's like super light. Titanium on the lock side, and then uh, you got the blade steel, but it's full flat ground. It's really, really a super light knife that works really, really well. And we've thought about doing other tar carbon fiber scales because we can knock the weight down on a knife by a significant amount without losing any structural integrity. Uh, is that something you guys are interested in? And that point comes up because first, this knife. This guy weighs in at about four ounces from the factory. It's all stainless steel, big old thick blade stock, and... It's just a wonderful design. I wish that CRKT, if they're listening, that they would get this thing made in some lighter materials and better blade material because Jasper Bonet's knocked it out of the park with this design. But it weighs a lot. This thing is four ounces whenever it comes from the factory. And that is just ridiculous for such a small knife. And... You know, I kind of pointed that out in the review of this knife. And I talked to Staza23 before Blade Show and then and quite a bit after Blade Show. And he did some magic to take 25% of the weight off of this knife. And let's look at it. He built a carbon fiber scale for this guy. And it literally takes a full ounce off this knife. This thing now weighs right in at three ounces. So, that is interesting to me. Goes right along with what we were doing with Todd Knife and Tool trying to figure this stuff out. And Staza is not the only guy that's doing this stuff. We have another young man with Anchor Point Customs that I spoke to at Blade Show that's also doing a lot of this stuff. Uh, carbon fiber scales, G10 scales, that sort of thing for stock knives. And... Is that something you guys are interested in? Are you interested in stuff like Fanatic Edge does? Fanatic Edge. He does uh, Cerakote, and he does anodizations and all kinds of crazy stuff. And, of course, puts uh, mirror edges on knives. And it's just a beautiful thing. But the, the question, question is, is, are these things worth it? And, you know, I'm not even sure what Staza would have to charge... Uh, for one of these scales. I would guess somewhere around 50 bucks or so because there's quite a bit of time and dealing with carbon fiber is a real pain in the butt. So, you know, is it worth that kind of thing? Is it worth it to spend an extra 20 bucks to get the carbon fiber overlay on the rat? Is it worth it to take the extra time to roll yourself a lanyard or purchase a lanyard from someone like Frankie or there's some other people that make lanyards. You can go over to Instagram and search that. You can find lots of people that make lanyards 
and really cool ones. You know, is it worth your time and effort to put those mirror edges on things? Or purchase a deep carry pocket clip for whatever knife you might have. You know, those are the questions I'm posing to you. Knife customization. How far do you go? What's worth it? If you've got, in, in the case of this pillar, a $25, $30 knife, is it worth spending 40 50 60 bucks? to get a carbon fiber scale or a custom backspacer for a knife that's still running 8 CR 13 MOV. Uh, those are the questions that I'm curious about. And you know, I've done it. I put the rosewood scales on that rat. I've put this carbon fiber scale from Staza 23 on this uh, pillar. And I, of course, made the lanyard for this thing. I've got a handful of deep carry pocket clips for various brands, but in general for you guys what do you think you know let's have a discussion down there in the comments and talk about this a little bit are these services something that you're looking for or are they something that's worthwhile now i think in many cases the scales like what staz has done here are definitely worth it the mirror edges well i'm going to do that myself and yes, they are worth it, even if you have to pay for them. And the deep carry pocket clips, that just depends on the knife and how that knife acts uh, in your pocket. Uh, if I have a deep carry pocket clip for something, I sometimes put it on, sometimes I don't. But let me know what your opinion is, and let's have a conversation down there in the comments. And you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.